In this video, we are diving into snippets, an exciting new feature in Svelte 5 that revolutionizes how we compose and pass UI content between components. Snippets are a key part of Svelte 5's new component composition API. They provide a powerful and flexible way to create reusable UI patterns and pass complex content between components. What are snippets? Let's start by understanding what snippets are and why they're important. Snippets are reusable chunks of markup within components. They replace and enhance the functionality of slots from Svelte 4. Snippets can be passed as props to other components. They offer more flexibility and power than traditional slots. Basic Snippet Usage Let's look at a basic example of how to use snippets. In this example, we are defining a snippet called figure that creates a figure element with an image and caption. We can then use this snippet multiple times with different images by using render as you can see in the example. Passing data to snippets. One of the great features of snippets is how easily they can receive and use data. Let's break down this example. First, we are passing a fruits array to the table component through the data prop. This array likely contains objects representing different fruits. The header snippet doesn't receive any parameters. It's a static definition of the table headers. The row snippet is where the magic happens. It receives a fruit parameter. This parameter will be filled with a single fruit object from the fruits array for each row of the table. Inside the row snippet, we are accessing properties of the fruit object. Component is iterating over the data array, our fruits in this case, and rendering a row for each item, passing that item to the row snippet. This demonstrates how snippets can receive and use data dynamically, making them powerful tools for creating reusable and flexible UI components. Recursive snippets. Now, Let's explore one of the most powerful features of snippets, recursion. Recursive snippets can open up possibilities for complex UI patterns that were challenging to implement before. Let's examine the countdown example on the slide. This snippet creates a countdown from 5 to rocket, demonstrating how snippets can call themselves. Here's how it works. The countdown snippet takes a parameter, n. If n is greater than 0, it displays the current number and then calls itself with n-1. This self-referential call is what makes the snippet recursive. The recursion continues until n reaches 0, at which point it displays the rocket emoji. Key points about recursive snippets. They can create complex, nested structures with minimal code. They're excellent for rendering hierarchical data. Be cautious with the depth of recursion to avoid performance issues. Use cases for recursive snippets. Recursive snippets have a wide range of practical applications. Let's explore some use cases. Nested comment threads, perfect for forums or social media platforms, Recursive snippets can elegantly display comment chains with proper indentation for replies. Multi-level navigation menus create complex, expandable collapsible menu structures for websites with deep hierarchies. File system explorers build intuitive interfaces for browsing nested folder structures, allowing users to expand and collapse directories. Organizational charts Visualize company hierarchies or family trees with expandable nodes for each level. JSON viewers create interactive displays for nested JSON data, allowing users to explore complex data structures. Task lists represent nested to-do lists or project hierarchies with the ability to expand subtasks or project components. These use cases demonstrate how recursive snippets can simplify the creation of complex, hierarchical UI elements. By leveraging recursion, we can create dynamic, depth-agnostic components that adapt to various levels of nesting in our data structures. For instance, 
consider a file explorer component. A recursive snippet could render a folder structure of any depth, calling itself for each subfolder. It's a powerful way to handle nested data without knowing the structure in advance. Recursive snippets showcase the true power and flexibility of Svelte 5's snippet feature. They allow developers to create sophisticated UI patterns with clean, maintainable code, handling complex data structures with ease. Let's run this example in VS Code. I will pass the JSON object root folder. As you can see in the example with files and subfolder structure, I will pass this object in the recursive snippet. You can see the code how recursion is happening here. Let's see the output. We see how we are getting the output. Snippets versus slots, syntax comparison. Let's compare the syntax of Svelte 4 slots with Svelte 5 snippets. As you can see in the example, on the left, we have the Svelte 4 slot syntax. It uses the Svelte fragment element with a slot attribute to define named slots. On the right is the new Svelte 5 snippet syntax. Here, we are passing a snippet as a prop using the at the rate snippet directive. This inline approach makes the code more compact and easier to read. Notice how the snippet syntax allows us to define the content right where it's being used, whereas slots require a separate definition. Snippets versus slots, feature comparison. Now, let's dive into the key differences between slots and snippets. Syntax. As we saw in the previous slide, snippets use a more concise, inline syntax. Flexibility Slots are predefined in components, while snippets can be created on the fly, offering more flexibility. Reusability Slots are typically used once per instance, but snippets can be reused multiple times within the same component. Data passing Passing data to slots can be verbose whereas snippets allow for easy parameter passing. Inline usage, slots often require separate definitions, breaking the flow of markup. Snippets can be defined inline, improving readability. Composability, snippets are more easily composed and nested compared to slots, allowing for more complex patterns. These differences make snippets a powerful tool for creating flexible, reusable UI components in Svelte 5, addressing some of the limitations of slots in previous versions. Best Practices for Snippets Here are some best practices to keep in mind when working with snippets. Use snippets for reusable UI patterns. Leverage parameters to make snippets flexible. Consider snippets as an alternative to components for simpler cases. Use descriptive names for snippet parameters. Combine snippets with other Svelte features for powerful UI composition. Now, let's look at a comprehensive example that ties together everything we've learned about snippets. We have two files, app.svelte and dynamictable.svelte. Let's start with dynamictable.svelte. This component defines a reusable table structure. It uses props to receive data and two snippets, one for the header and one for each row. This makes our dynamic table component completely customizable. Now, let's look at how we use this dynamic table component in our app.svelte. In our app, we are creating two different tables using the same dynamic table component. The first is a fruit inventory and the second is an employee directory. For the fruit inventory, we pass the fruit's data to the dynamic table. We define a header snippet with three columns, fruit, quantity, and price. We define a row snippet that displays each fruit's name, quantity, and price. For the employee directory, we pass the employee's data to the same dynamic table component. 
we define a different header snippet with four columns, ID, name, role, and salary. We define a different row snippet that displays each employee's ID, name, role, and salary. This example showcases the true power of snippets. With just one dynamic table component, we can create multiple tables with different structures, all without modifying the dynamic table component itself. Let's run this code in VS Code and see the result. As you can see, we have two completely different tables, both using the same underlying dynamic table component. The snippets allow us to customize the content and structure of each table to fit our specific needs. This approach not only makes our code more reusable but also more maintainable. If we need to make changes to the core table structure, we only need to update the dynamic table component, and all our tables will automatically reflect those changes. Key Takeaways To wrap up, here are the key points to remember about snippets. They provide a more flexible way to compose UI than slots. They replace and enhance the functionality of slots. Snippets can be passed as props and reused easily. They support parameters for dynamic content. Snippets can be recursive, allowing for complex UI patterns. Snippets in Svelte 5 offer a new level of flexibility in UI composition. They're more powerful than slots, easier to use inline, and open up new possibilities for creating dynamic, reusable UI components. That's all for our exploration of snippets. In the next video, we'll dive into more advanced topics in Svelte 5. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.